Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Major League Baseball for Thursday, April 11th. Cousin Jared, uh, I feel like we are repeating whatever season that was, two years ago, three years ago, where we were just begging for a like plus half a unit day because every day seemingly was like, we're going to win them all or lose them all. And there was like no in between. And then of course you can't even profit off of that because you, you can't even say like, well, the first pick did this because this is how it's going to play out because then randomly it would, it would even, it was just so much of a yeah. roller coaster. I feel like we're having that again. It, it I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Wednesday was a great day for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After Monday and Tuesday were terrible. After Sunday was great. After Saturday was terrible. And it's just, yeah. Lots of ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. It is. That is the, I think the only time since we've been doing this was that baseball season. And mm. I was like, is this fun? Yeah. Um, it, it got to the point where it's like, you know, the emotions couldn't handle it. And it was like, you know, every other night you were like, I'm done with it. And then the next night you were like, this is the best thing ever. We yeah. have got it figured out. And it was like that for the entire season. Yeah. Um, man, like, I, I hope. And I know you're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to, you know, to, to help out with that. But, uh, man, I hope it, <laughs> hope we don't have a repeat. I don't know if, if uh, you know, the, the, the heart can take it. Yeah, I, I, I think we did do minus ones then. Uh, I think we just did money lines back yeah. then. And I, I yeah. think the minus ones and the run lines will help because I think what will happen is we, we've had a handful of minus ones uh, push. You know, we had the Guardians, of course, here. Um on Wednesday night, you know, went by one. And I think we saw more roller coasters because we had to lay bigger odds mm -hmm. and take bigger odds. And so we would have more nights where like the dogs just would come through to be great or they wouldn't. And we'd lose all of the favorites. We just lose a couple of big favorites. And so I think now playing the minus ones and the, you know, the run lines, they go, will help balance it a little bit, but so far it's been crazy. Uh, yeah. But if you're with us over on dub club, we added this morning, just based off the odd changes, um, we added the Mariners at a B grade pick that won the Diamondbacks at an A grade pick that won the Rays at minus one that won the over and the Brewers and Reds that won. Uh, I mean, so we added a bunch of great picks. We added, we had three first five A grades that I was like, one of them, I was a little bit scared of the other one too. I was like, well, we're already kind of playing about all three of those ones. So just a great day here. Got to play the day yeah. back on the right track here. Uh, on Wednesday. So just a lot of good things. Didn't win every single one, of course, but uh, had, had a lot of good things. But but even then, I still feel like we're getting some bad luck here. And I, you know, I watch a lot of baseball and I'm the first to tell you like, we'll have good variants, we'll have bad variants. And I'll talk about when we get lucky and we have wins we shouldn't get. I don't feel like we've had many of those this year. Even thinking through um, like today, you know, we had the Cardinals and we didn't have a huge edge on it, but we thought, you know, the Cardinals made a lot of sense. If their center fiddle catches a routine fly ball in the first inning, they win that game uh whatever two to two two to one three to three to two whatever three to two i guess they went three to two because there were two runs there that were unearned that i mean it just he overran it by multiple feet then tried to come back and it hits his glove i mean it's just terrible yeah. and things like that it, i don't know maybe there's some good i'm sure there's some good luck things helping us i just feel like i'm not seeing them uh the over you know in that afternoon game with the dodgers twins uh we had a b grade first five over which hits and then there are no more runs for the rest of the game like what is what's up with that you know so um yeah. you know it's just been a, a a weird season so far and i I think my main thought on this is we we have these types of runs where things get weird. A lot of times if they happen in June or July, you just, you're just kind of in the middle of it. You're like, whatever, like we just yep. couldn't bear it. But like early on, it kind of hurts a little bit more, but it's a great day on Wednesday. Hopefully we can keep it rolling on Thursday, but remember extra picks, first five run line, all sorts of summaries, information, details, picks when you can't watch the show when we aren't able to have a show in the discord chat group all over there on dub club QR code of link in the show description, gets you a 10 day free trial to start you out. We have some of the best retention numbers on dub club. Obviously it's not perfect for everybody. If it's not for you, that's fine. I don't, that's okay. If it's not for you, I, I don't want you to do something that's not for you, but check it out. A lot of people seem to like the information, the details, the summary, the discord chat. We have a, just a phenomenal group of people over there. Um, check it out if you have not yet. Before we get started, some quick reminders, information about sideline and the community rules, 
pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new. Remember, no, no negative Nancy's here, right? We want positive vibes only. We know when things are good. We know when things are bad. We like to just keep things positive around here. Um, no need for negativity because uh, we're all we're all humans. And, and, and when things are good, I'm trying to make things better. And when things are not, I'm trying to make things better, harder. So it's it's always trying to improve. I'm my biggest critic. So, you, you know, we got to keep things positive here because I'm always working to make things better for you. We are projecting the average game. One game is unknown. We have no idea what will happen in one game. We are talking about long-term probabilities. And that's how we profit here, not because I know what will happen tomorrow, but because if we're playing good prices and good numbers in the long run, by playing the better prices, we will win more than we lose because we are going to win some and we're going to lose some. There are no locks in games. Gambling. Take what you like and leave the rest, but we like it when you like it. Please like this show. It helps others find us. Whew. I try to get fast because I feel like that was a really long intro, and I was like, people want to get to the picks, so we got to just kind of do all that. 12.20 p.m. Eastern, Mets at the Braves. What looks to be, at this point, at least listed pitchers per the interwebs is the, the two guys that were going to go yesterday here, Wednesday, with the rain out, Jose Quintana and Alan Winans. Uh, so we've talked about this game already. The Braves are just an incredible baseball team. Um, great offense. They have the edge at starting pitching here. Quintana's looked good in his first two starts, but the interline metrics still make me concerned and think that the Braves should be able to put up some runs off of them. The Braves' bullpen is great. Mets relievers might actually be the strength of their team, which is, I mean, a very Mets thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Walls projecting 8.7 runs. That's going to give us under 9.5 as an A-grade pick on this. Because, Jared, I mentioned on show yesterday that in some of the tweaks, some of the updates to the model, knowing that totals just have not gone well for us, trying to figure out why, what's going on, how much of this is – early season baseball pitchers not figuring it out how much of this is managers trying to get guys in uh, the bullpen and, and that sort of thing how much of it is the baseball how much of it is the temperature etc really trying to do everything we can to not take unders yeah. and i don't mean that literally i just mean kind of saying we're trying to boost everything up we're trying to not overreact to the cold and just like i said yesterday with that game in course where i said hey there's no reason for this total to be 12 and a half we took the under at an A grade. There was no reason for it to be 12. I saw at closer to the first pitch, it was 11. The model said uh, 10 point something, and that was a pretty easy under winner force. It's the same thing here. I'm trying to not have us take unders, and yet the model's still saying A grade under 9.5. The Braves' unders have not been incredible, just like the Coors' unders haven't been incredible because it's Coors. But knowing the adjustments I've made, I've just got to go with it here. Model gives a 7% decrease to the runs based off the weather. And again, that's kind of tamped down based off what we're seeing here so far, largely because the wind will be blowing a little bit in a little bit across chilly enough weather that the ball shouldn't carry too much. The Braves have a great offense, but you never really trust the Mets to score that many. They did come back and score a bunch of runs uh, in the earlier game of the series, whatever that was Tuesday. And that game got to six to five. But I mean, that was heading for an under. If you're watching the game, you had to feel like under was the right call. And there were just some crazy late runs. But you play that game again. I like our chances. I think under nine and a half makes a lot of sense. Cousin Jared, what's your take? Yeah, I'll, I like the under here as well. Although I have to say, you, it hurts my feelings that you're trying to tell sideline not to play as many under. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I mean, that that's, that's not my brand. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would have to say, I think that them not playing uh, today as of this recording yesterday, as of the time you're watching this, um, that Braves bullpen giving up all the runs late kind of surprised me. I think everybody getting a day of rest there, you're not going to have any guys needing to, you know, take a day off because they already just got a day off. Um, and so I think really for me, it's the Braves bullpen. I mean, they got an edge starting pitcher too, but relative to the rest of the pitching staff starting pitcher here, eh, just okay. Um, but once you get that Braves bullpen, like you can say about the Braves in a lot of ways, so many strengths, uh, the bullpen, one of those. And so um, I, I think that that's a difference for me. I don't trust the Mets to score very many runs in general. Yeah. And especially when you've got a fresh Braves bullpen, I, I don't think, I think they're going to have a tough time. And that's one of the benefits. One of the things that sideline sees in this, it is a, a fairly intricate model with the way I've coded it to, to look at a couple different variables. Again, it's not, I'm not a believer in black box AI that we don't understand everything that I do. I can explain exactly what's happening. And without getting too much in the weeds, the model's looking at a guy like Winans and saying, he may not go deep. He may not be able to go very far in this game, which is absolutely true. The, the Braves are going to treat any of the young pitchers, I feel like, with kid gloves, especially with what happened with Strider here. Yeah. They've got so many good bullpen arms. And like you said, that day off, 
that kind of helps alleviate that because they have so many good bullpen arms. You contrast that with a team with a weaker pen that might need him to go longer or might struggle if he can't go longer. If he can't go that deep, the Braves are fine with, the, yeah. with how many relievers they have. So it kind of offsets that. The Mets relievers aren't bad as well. And like we said, we never really trust them to score runs. So the model projects 8.7, the most likely outcomes in this, eight and nine runs, under nine and a half, makes for an A grade minus 110 odds is also very nice. 110 p.m. Eastern, Brewers and the Reds. I mentioned yesterday we'd probably be on the Brewers. We had a weak lean to the Brewers who looked to be cleaning up so far. But, again, we gave out the A grade over on this game in the morning once a line came out. So, again, that's one of the reasons to be on Dub Club. A lot of extra good picks there. Today we're A grade, but not on the total on the side. And I've been saying it all season. We're mostly going to be fading the Reds. And you saw it here again Wednesday. I mean, the game's not over yet. So, maybe the Reds make a miracle comeback. But, I mean, they just – their bullpen is rough. If they fall behind, they're mostly in trouble. Their offense isn't that great, especially with the fact that they've got two to three regulars, really three regulars out. Um, and in this one, it's a massive starting pitcher mismatch. Freddie Peralta's one of the stronger pitchers in baseball. Looked great his first two starts. Underlying metrics look great. I mean, a 78 grade, once you get into the 70s, you're a really good pitcher. Bullpen-wise, we like the Brewers. Nick Martinez for the Reds. Hasn't looked good so far. Underlying metrics, very met. Last season, last season before that, very met. Always been a guy that you never really can trust. Anything can happen in one game, but the model says the Brewers win this 60% of the time. That makes minus 118 a strong play. Because, Andrew, this, to me, feels like play of the day territory. We did not make it play of the day uh, for a specific reason that we don't need to talk about on show. We could talk about it over our Discord because I can tell you exactly why. But but this is kind of like play of the day worthy, in my opinion. Not to say it's a lock. There are no locks in gambling. But any price near even money seems like a steal in Freddie Peralta versus Nick Martinez, knowing the Brewers also have the edge everywhere else. Yeah. Cousin Jared, how much do you love this pick? Uh, I like it quite a bit. And... The main reason being you talked about the starting pitching edge. So, of course, that's a big factor for me. But also you talked about the weather. Uh, you, you talked about, um, you know, earlier you talked about the cold weather and sideline saying that everything needs to go under and trying to adjust it to play some overs. Um, the thing about Cincinnati is the park factors in general outside of like maybe Fenway Park. And I'm sure there's probably like one or two others, but um, just the natural park factors uh, of the park there in Cincinnati lend itself to scoring a lot of runs. And so I think the discrepancy that you're seeing here uh, is this two standard deviations, one standard deviation, two standard deviations difference. Um, Almost two in the bullpen, too. Yeah. yeah um, I, I think – that is even more magnified in a park like Cincinnati where it's just going to naturally lend itself to runs. And if you're the Reds and, and throw in, you know, there's a reason that the Reds have have played the way they have with their poor bullpen. Their their park is not doing them any favors at, at all. And so I think the pitching mismatch is just um, exasperated here um, because of, you know, how how the park plays in general. So yeah, like like the Brewers here, I think a starting pitching edge goes further here than it does in most parks. Yeah, starting pitcher edge, edge is two standard deviations, bullpen, two standard deviations, top relievers, not quite two. Uh, but yeah, just big, big differentials here between the pitchers. And I think uh, maybe another way that you're, another thing you can try to say to that is what we talk about at college basketball a lot, which is, you know, a team that really can slow down the pace can minimize some of those edges by minimizing the number of possessions and kind of say, hey, we're going to play a, a seven possession game out of this. Obviously not seven, but they're trying to, right? Well, Virginia, Virginia but yeah. Virginia might be trying to yeah um, and, and can kind of help overcome some of their deficiencies but when you know playing in cincinnati is almost a little bit like you know playing up tempo that you're gonna have a lot of runs and with those pitchers it just like it, it's like an interaction effect of yeah. they're, they're not good to start with they're gonna give up runs they're gonna give up even more runs the brewers weakness is their offense but as you've seen in this series playing in cincinnati they have no problem scoring runs how much that's the park how much that's the pitchers who cares? Let's take yeah. advantage of it either way. They've been good to us this series so far. Uh, I believe they uh, came through for us on Tuesday. They got the total for Wednesday. And then and then Monday was the game. They started off down huge. It almost came back and won. Just yeah. illustrating 
just how weak that Reds bullpen is. Everything was stacked against them from the start, and they still almost got it done. We're going to see if they can't finish it out here with a winner. But as always, folks, remember, shop around for the best price. Every nickel and dime you can save can help you. It'll help you when you're losing. Save money. It'll help you when you're winning. Stack up more units. If you haven't checked them out yet, BetUS, link in the show description will get you a 125% bonus on your first ever three deposits. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Also at 1.10 p.m. <clears throat> Eastern Twins and the Tigers. Uh, this one will be a nice day in Detroit, around 60 degrees, slight breeze blowing in. That will keep the number of runs scored a little bit lower. Honestly, the Twins, it's kind of the style of baseball that they want to play anyway. <clears throat> uh, as you saw here in the matinee against the Dodgers, they're a little bit weaker on offense without Royce Lewis, but their bullpen seems to be doing a good enough job. They're pitching a good enough job to keep them in games. Uh, and that's exactly what we expect here. Really a coin toss game specifically here. Can't really say what's going to happen either way. So this is really all about the price. This should be priced at minus 105 aside, minus 110 aside. Uh, but we're getting plus 113 on the twins. That makes for a B grade. Um, Cousin Jared, I, I feel like I might be preaching the choir here. But I do think it is important to remind people because probability is weird and random events are weird. We would say that rolling a die is a random event. However, we know the probability of landing on any specific number. So that's when you have a game like craps. We can calculate the probabilities, the edges, et cetera, because each roll is random, but we do know the underlying probabilities. And thus in the long run, we know what will happen. We don't know what will happen in one game. Sports get weirder because the same phenomenon happens, except we also don't know the underlying probabilities. We use a model to help us assess that. But it goes back to what we're saying. Each roll of the die, each game is a random event, but the probability isn't what's random underlying it. And that's what we're saying here. This is a 50-50 type game. It's like rolling a die and saying, I'm going to get an even number or an odd number. Well, we don't know which one you're going to get when you roll it one time, but we do know if you do it a thousand times, you'll be pretty close to 500 a pop. And that's what we're saying here. This is pretty dang 50-50, but at the plus 113 makes us a good long-term play. Why is it a good long-term play? In baseball, there are 2,500 games over the course of the season. If we can identify, you know, 500 of these and go 250 and 250, we're going to make us like seven, eight units just right there. And it's a grind, but it's a slow and steady profit-making machine. And that's what we're looking here for here. Cousin Jared, uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah. So I, I would say, man, I, Tariq Skubal, very good, mm, uh, mm, very good pitcher. Very good. So is Pablo Lopez. And to me, both of these teams have just been meh so far this season. I mean, the Tigers have a better record. The Twins played well, the Mets and who else? They played someone else that was rough, I think. Well, they, they lost two out of three to the A's, mm, um, but yeah. the, the Twins just lost two out of three to the Dodgers. So where I'm getting with this is like, I don't really feel like you can compare the records necessarily yeah. because the team ca caliber of teams that they have played uh, are not exactly the same. I, and maybe the Tigers will be better this year. Maybe the twins are going to have a down year. I don't know. I just, as of April 10th that we're recording this, I have so much more faith in the twins offense. And we know that they have a propensity to strike out a lot. And with a guy like Scooble on the mound, 100%. If you told me that the twins were going to strike out like 15 times in this game, I would say, okay, like, yeah, that, yeah sure. that's, that's not <laughs> abnormal. But I, I still just have a lot more faith. When they do make contact, they make good contact. And so I I just have a lot more faith in the twins' offense than I do in, in, in the Tigers' offense. And so to me, this feels like a toss up game, two good starting pitchers, slightly better offense on one side. I'm getting plus odds to back that team. So to me, this is just kind of a, a logic play more so than I feel super strong about any one thing in particular. This game is fascinating to me. Uh, this might be our first total of seven on the season. I'm not sure I've seen a seven 
uh, yet. I've only seen seven and a half to, to my knowledge. Um, models projecting 6.9. So, I mean, the models are right there. Be like, there shouldn't be a lot of runs. It makes sense. These two pitchers are two of the best pitchers in baseball, and they don't really get a lot of love, maybe because their markets, I guess. I'm not really sure. But uh, I, I kind of skipped over that at the start. But yes, Pablo Lopez and Trick Scoobal just phenomenal first two starts great underlying metrics great i mean just nothing more to say i don't i don't have to say the great great pitching here um like you said, twins a little bit better offense maybe a little better bullpen but you know i think it goes back to kind of what we said in the last game the flip side of it though this one won't have a lot of runs great pitching good bullpens plus 113 sure because i mean this game is likely to be four to three three to two two to one right and it's yeah. like you said at that point hey if you're in that type of game but at least for now, we kind of trust the Twins a little bit more. Scoobles very good. So is Pablo Lopez. He's been a guy we love to back. So be great playing the Twins at plus 113. BBM Eastern Astros and the Royals uh, cash this over uh, pretty easily here, about halfway through the game, as I think our, our read on that one was pretty accurate with the Astros, just having a lot of issues at this point with pitching. Um, uh, you know, too many injuries. Yep. Really yep. Right. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, they'll throw Hunter Brown here, who's uh, been a mixed bag so far to start the season against Brady Singer, who's looked really good, looks revitalized uh, here for the Royals. The Astros are favored in this one. We're going to take the Astros at minus 130. It's a B grade pick. Here's the reason why. Number one, uh, Hunter Brown, his last start definitely fell apart. I'm going to give him one more chance, right? To kind of, hmm. to kind of see if we can get back on track. Number two, well, the Astros bullpen has struggled and has definitely been a little bit overworked to these last couple of days. The Astros offense is just a lot better than the Royals offense. Mm -hmm. I don't want the first 10 games of the season for us to lose sight of that fact. And as much overworked as the Astros bullpen is, the fact that the, you know, uh, Wednesday night game here wasn't competitive. It at least helps them kind of figure out who they want to use and who they want to burn, who they don't want to burn. Mm -hmm. Helps that a little bit. You know, I think we are at the point of the season where we're going to start making some plays like this on a team that maybe hasn't looked great so far and it be like, you know, we don't want to overreact to just a handful of games. Every team looks bad for a handful of games. The Astros should be bigger favorites than this based on the fact that their offense is a lot better and their bullpen is a lot better. And while Stinger has looked good, this price implies that Singer is a lot better than Hunter Brown knowing everything else. He might be. So far, these first two starts, he's looked great. I can see more from both of these guys before I feel confident about that. So we got the Ashes at minus 130, B grade pick. Model says they win 57% of the time. And to get to the price that the market has it at, like I said, I just think that you'd have to think that Singer is for sure all the way back and the much better shooting pitcher. And I'm not convinced that's the case. Even if that is the case, the Astros still got a shot to win this game. That offense can win any game, as you saw on Monday night against the defending World Series champions when they started off down 5 nothing because their pitcher couldn't find a strike them. Uh, mm -hmm. You, as I am an Astros fan, it's not been a great start to the season, uh, but you know they're going to win some games eventually, right? Yeah, yeah. Um so, I mean, anybody who has watched this show for any length of time knows that uh, I, I will be the first ones to tell you when I feel like my team's in trouble. And who boy, uh, I got a bad feeling. Before we came on, I was like, this is this is like looking like the 111 loss team that I set through in 2011 or 2012, whichever year it was. Uh, they all run together because we all lost yeah. so many yeah. games in all of yeah. those seasons. Um, what you said is correct. Like, I know factually, you, I know you stated facts. Yep. Um, I, yep. I cannot argue with that. Uh, <laughs> my heart does not feel as good about it as maybe the statistics and, and sideline actually says the, the advanced analysis there. Um, but I cannot deny the Astros offense is still good and it is going to have plenty of games this season where it is going to, um, pull out the game and win it for them. It may be 10 and nine, maybe 10 to eight, something like that. But that offense is good enough to win in lots of games. I know that's a fact. Um, just hasn't been what we've seen so far. This season, so it has not. Uh, this game could get interesting 
we're talking about 20 to 25 mile an hour winds right now. Mm. Questionable in the direction. It's like, mm. what, what do I say in lieu of a gust of wind? Because I, I want to say a gust of wind and this, but I'm talking about wind. So what's, I don't, there's some equivalent to that, right? Mm. Something change, small change, whatever you want to call it. You know, a butterfly yeah. flaps his wings mm -hmm. and that wind's going to be blowing in from left field. And all of a sudden you're going to be talking about a game where I know it's a header friendly park. I know the Astros offense is good. I know the Royals bullpen isn't. Um, but you're going to be struggling to get seven runs. It shifts a little bit to the side, and all of a sudden, no big deal, and this game might have doubled his runs. So a lot of variance there in the total will be interesting to see how that plays out. But either way, at least at this point in the season, and, and this is this is the last time, this is the last time I'm going to say this about it, we're going to – Brady Singer was a guy we loved back two years ago. Last year, dreadful. He looks good so far. Hunter Brown's a guy coming into the season – I really think we're going to see more of the early season Hunter Brown from last year, not the late season. We're mm. two games in, a big game to see for these guys going forward because now we're adding 50% more data to see how they go. If Hunter Brown blows up, if Brady Singer looks good, we'll change our tune next time out. But at least for now, with only two games under the belt, I'm just going to sit back and say, look, I think both pitchers are solid. The Astros have enough edges of a role, so they should be bigger favorites. And let's not overreact to this early season start. Plenty of teams have started slow, had bad stretches, middle, early, whatever. And that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. For instance, this Marlins team just beat the Yankees tonight, right? They aren't a what would what would one in ten translate to in the course of the season, right? Uh, yeah. Or whatever you know, twenty five win team, right? Yeah. They are better than that. So uh, th th they're obviously not a hundred win team, but let's not overreact. Astros minus one thirty. This price should be a little bit higher. Gets us to a B grade, so we're going to take them there. They're one of their afternoon game, also involving a Texas team, A's and the Rangers. Uh, looks like we're going to get the Rangers here at the minus one and a half, a game that I sent out to our dub clubbers <clears throat> this morning and said, hey, as of this morning, it had reached A grade threshold. Uh, so it was B grade threshold uh, on the show last night. The price got a little bit better. Uh, and so it looks like we're going to get a winner there. We're going to go back to the well here again. My Rangers minus one, A grade pick. Because we, we've backed Oakland a couple times here and there, and, and we'll back them plenty more. Um Again, same story I've been talking about, right? Their bullpen isn't good, but they've got a couple decent arms. Their offense isn't good, but it's not terrible. Um, a lot of their starting pitchers are just very mediocre. It's just tough to win against a team like the Rangers on the road when they're just outmatched all over the field. The Rangers have a much better offense. John Gray has been pretty shaky, but no less shaky than J.P. Sears. Uh, if either one of these guys does anything, I expect it to be Gray. And if not, we'll turn it over to the bullpens. And I trust that the Rangers can find – the A's are going to find seven good innings out of their pit. I can guarantee you that. No. The Rangers might. The Rangers might not, but they got a shot at least. So we've got the Rangers winning this almost two – a little over two out of three times, uh, making the Rangers minus one. And as with anything in this, of course, you could take the run line, you take the money line. I love the minus one personally just from a mental – uh, mental health standpoint of the minus one and a half can be so infuriating when you know you have the home team or you have a team that just ekes one out. Um, you lose a little bit of the payout, um, yeah. but you know it, it helps you there. It, 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 and the minus one's better for when the team loses because your odds are a little bit better. You do lose some of the times that you, you would win, but if you're playing those big big odds, you aren't going to get win that much anyway. So I think it's a perfect middle ground. Personally, I like the balance um, of this, but again, to each their own. Uh, Cousin Jared, how are you looking to play this game? Well, the example that I will give in support of your argument is Tuesday with the Braves and the Mets. And the Braves are up 6 nothing or whatever. I turned the game off. Why Why am I watching a game where it's 6 nothing in the eighth inning? Uh, and then the Mets come back and, and lose only 6-5. to five. And yeah. so I did not do what you said. I took the run line with the Braves. And so I lost while you essentially pushed. pushed um, so that essentially, is, just yeah. literally pushed. Yeah, you, you, you pushed. One, uh, one, one, one lost the other and uh, got back yeah. exactly what put in. Yeah, um, I did not. I'm a loser. Um, so with that in mind, in this situation, I would take Rangers on the uh, run line. I have no problem <laughs> doing that. Like, you, you uh, love it. We, I you, love you, it. You have, you, and you have to like look at the, okay, like the Rangers are a good team. We know that. Um, the A's, are terrible. Like, look at the – from a mathematical perspective, what was the A's run differential last year? Oh, it was, it like was negative 9 trillion or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so I, I don't think that the A's have done anything to close that gap anywhere. And 
I so you know I I'm not going to argue with you know if you want to do Rangers minus one that's fine. Um, I, I I think I would take the run line here. It's just one of those things where the the A's are just so bad. Um, I, I I think probably when I'm looking at this, I look more at like how bad is the bad team more so than how good is the good team because there's there's lots of good teams. Um, there's not quite as many teams as bad as the A's is. is yeah, I mean the. The White Sox, um, the Rockies, that might Rocky, be it. Rockies, Rockies on the road, maybe. Rockies on the road for sure. Like for that's sure. that may be the list. That yeah. may be the list. Um, so. The last thing to say about this game: the A's entering Wednesday had covered the run line six straight games, but wow. but caveat to that: number one, as we just talked about the Astros, it's a small sample size early season. They aren't going to go. 80% or whatever on the run line for the season. Yeah. They won't be favored hardly at all. So they'll almost always be on the run line plus yeah. one and a half. Um, number two, and the more important thing about that is look at the situation there. All of those games were at home and a pitcher from the ballpark with yeah. literally, literally, cousin Jared, I've been there miles of foul territory for pop yeah. flies to yeah. against the Red Sox who are not, our father's Red Sox, right? They are a pitching-oriented team. And against the Tigers, who are a pitching-oriented team, yeah. and then they won the first game against the Rangers. That is very different than playing in a hitter-friendly ballpark in Arlington that's got one of the higher park factors once you get past Fenway, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Coors. I might be forgetting one, but your, your top, like, you know, out of, out of your top five, I think the, the Rangers might be their top ten for sure. Yep. And they're in hitter-friendly ballparks. The model knows that the model looks at the expected number of runs and it calculates that in its run line probability calculations. So when the A's are at home, we are going to give them a better chance to lose by one. And mm -hmm. that will be reflected in what we pick and how we pick, because what the pick specifically is, is a combination of the edge differential and the probability we win. So it's all about combination of can we make money? And if so, how much money can we make? And at Oakland, it's a little bit of a different story to lay the run, <laughs> run and a half, because they are more likely to keep a closer, low scoring game other than maybe a, uh, a day game. But on the road, it's a different story. So I'm with you at this point. The Rangers money line is a perfectly fine play. Um, I personally like the minus one because, Jared, you like um, the run line. Of course, you can find the exact edges, the exact thresholds, everything. All that information is provided on Dub Club for every single game. In this game specifically, I, you know, I'll make the comment: the edges are pretty similar across the board for all of them. That's not always the case, but all that information is available for you to dive in if you're with us over on Dub Club. Evening slate: two games here, Pirates and the Phillies. Uh, this will be Jared Jones and Ranger Suarez, two pitchers that have looked pretty similar this season with results. Underlying metrics so far, like Jared Jones more, he's obviously a, a young kid, a prospect, highly regarded. Uh, Ranger Suarez has a history of being a very respectable pitcher. You know, if you if you look hard enough, and depending on kind of which eye you close, you could talk yourself into Jared Jones being the better pitcher here. I'm not saying he is. The model still gives a slight edge to Suarez here. Uh, but he's looked good so far this year, and – the idea of translating prospect in minor league stats is not quite an exact science. And a guy like Ranger Suarez has been a little bit up and down all over the place. There's a very good chance, uh, you know, Thursday night rolls around and, and Jerry Jones is the better pitcher. Um, what's the probability of that? I don't know, 40%, 45%, something like that. But, but it's not a huge edge for the Phillies here. Bullpen wise, both these bullpens are solid. The concern with the Pirates is that Bednar does not know where the ball's going. Mm. And that's a bad thing for two reasons. Number one, sometimes the ball doesn't go anywhere near the plate, and that leads to what we call a walk. Other times, the ball goes right over the middle of the plate, and that's what leads to what we call hard contact and hits. So that's a problem because he's a really good pitcher. The good news for the Pirates, they have a lot of other really good pitchers in their bullpen. Uh, the setup guy, Chapman, is one who has similar issues at times. They got to figure out what's going on with him. He's got to be able to find his location, his release point, whatever the heck's going on with him. Other than that, though, the model says the Pirates have the better offense. What a time to be alive mm -hmm. here as this Phillies team 
just really seems to struggle on offense. They've obviously got a really good hitter in Bryce Harper. Schwarber can hold his own, but you get past those two guys in Turner and it starts to fall off pretty quickly. Rio Muto is not quite the guy he was a few years ago. They've got a handful of guys playing in that lineup that are just not great hitters. Whereas the Pirates have some depth. I can't believe we're saying this, but the Pirates have an edge on offense here. That makes this close to a coin toss game. Not exactly. The Phillies are favored and they should be favored, but they shouldn't be favored by as much. That's going to make us in the Pirates plus 130. B great picks. The model says they can win this 46% of the time. So if we can win this close to 50% of the time, it makes plus 130 a pretty good investment. Cousin Jared, backing the Pirates at the Phillies and we're not even getting like plus 200. What a time to be alive. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I would like to take credit that I, and wow, the, a Reds guy just made an amazing catch uh, going in, into the stands. That was a heck of a heck of a catch. Anyway. Uh, it's yeah. more exciting than when I was on show and, and live narrated everyone, Trevor Story, you know, jacking yeah. up his, his shoulder. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't unsee yeah. that. I just saw that. That was really yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was nice catch and foul territory there. Um, okay. So the first thing I want to say is I, I will, you know, uh, you know, take the bullet here and say that I broke the pirates curse last week when, when I was on the show, picked them mm-hmm. to win and, and mm-hmm. they won that game against the nationals, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, and I'll, I'll say what I, I'll say what I said last week. I'll say it again. We have multiple instances now of the Pirates starting a season. Well, Wheels are probably going to come off at some point. I don't know when that's going to be, but until the wheels come off, I am going to be riding with the Pirates. Um, my other question that I have is, is like, how soon can we see Paul Skeens in the big mm, leagues? Mm. Uh, I mean, y- y- you want to talk about pitching. Uh, mm. The guy, I-, I don't know what what he has to do. I mean, I know like all of the reasons why he's not called up. But, yeah. you know, I think for the good of everybody, I would love to see him up. The other thing is Ranger Suarez. Um I feel like sideline might be a little high on him and he has been last year was, he was fine last year. The two years before that, he was good. Um, Last year he was just fine. I I just am not sold. If I am getting Ranger Suarez from 2023 in this game, then love the pirates. If you told me I was getting like 2022, 2021 Ranger Suarez. Okay. Maybe I have some concerns, um, but I'm going to need to see him go back to that level of form. And again, he hasn't been bad. Um, he just, in my mind, I think he's more of a 96, 97, 98 pitcher, whereas sideline right now has him a, a 91. So, um, Suarez is one of those that I kind of, I have kept an eye on because it's like, is he really that good? Um, mm. so asking myself that question. So, um, I'll be interested to see how he does. And, and we talked about this a little bit before show uh, Suarez, I think is a guy that might have a little bit wider than usual uh, air bands because of his injury history, his weird history of like, he's a reliever, he's a starter, he's a reliever, he's a starter mm-hmm. stretching like that, that whole weird thing. He, he's starting to get to the point now where that's not the case. And he's just been the starter or whatever, but he still has some of the injury stuff. So, so his, his air bands of course are, are shrinking, but they're shrinking, but they are still there. And of course, Jones is are through the roof, right. As a, as a young guy like this, like yeah. he he's a guy that is going to, move up or down based off how well he does as fast as anybody as, yeah. these, as these young guys are. So, um, you know, hundred rating right now, but you know, if he keeps pitching the way he did those first two starts, he will be down in the eighties in like three weeks. Right. right? So right. he might be a lot better. We just don't know at this point. Again, we're taking the minor league data and, and the prospect ratings on and trying to figure all that out, but it's, it's the air beds are just a lot bigger. So, um, another possible edge the pirates have here uh i can't believe i'm saying this but it seems like if the wheels are coming off in the pirates it might be because we're counting on their bullpen too much and i, I just mm, yeah. i can't believe to say that you would think their offense because the offense is what was last year where they had a couple injuries and they just yeah. didn't couldn't hit the ball at all they had they had a, a month-long stretch i think where they scored more than three runs like one time yeah uh, and this year it's like the offense isn't a concern at all it seems like which is kind of crazy yeah and i i mean i'll you know, to reference another thing that we talked about last time i just if if the Pirates are going to continue playing well all season, they got to have Mitch Keller from the first half of last season. You got to have mm-hmm. Mitch Keller from 2022, not the Mitch Keller of the second half of last season or some of the periodic things that we've seen so far this season um, because the rest of their team is not strong enough to have him just going out there and just being average. He needs to be good. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have they don't have the depth. They, they need nope. to, they need everything to go right for them. Of course, they're going to stay competitive. But it's always a fun story. Again, beautiful place to watch ball game. Uh, right. In state rivalry here, we take the Pirates plus odds. 
B grade pick. And folks, the last thing I want to say about this game, of course, is as a reminder, right? We say, take what you like and leave the rest. Don't bet something you don't like. Sometimes we use the model to help us decide what not to bet as well. So while I think the Pirates are a decent investment, the other possibility you could take from this discussion is that maybe the Phillies at the current price of, you know, minus 150 or whatever it is, that would imply that they win 60% of the time. And so if you don't like the Pirates, that's fine. Maybe it's just trying to say, hey, the Phillies are just priced a little bit too high and it's not a good long-term investment. Doesn't mean anybody's going to win. We don't know who's going to win. Somebody won this game. Somebody in hindsight will be a good bet. But ahead of time, we have to say, is the price worth it, i.e. is the reward worth the risk? And the idea is that the Phillies risk at minus 150, not worth the reward because this game is closer to a coin toss than the odds would suggest. So for us as Pirates are passed, like the Pirates here, B-grade plus 130. And we'll wrap up with Orioles and Red Sox, our first game of the day here with no official pick. As of right now, uh, this one doesn't have the greatest angle on it we might look for a first five if i had to play something on this one cousin jared right now i would be looking at the over nine it's plus odds right now mm -hmm. we got the over on uh wednesday night if i had to i'd be looking at that i would not be playing over nine and a half but there's really just no rush to lock this in because the over is not the greatest value in the world with regards to the side i don't think there's any value at all the orioles are the slightest of favorites according to the market and they are the slightest of favorites according to sideline we are in lockstep with the market on this one two really good starting pitchers in grayson rodriguez and gary whitlock who both on the cusp of getting into the 70s, great starting pitching. Orioles, better offense, better bullpen, but on the road, balances out to be a coin toss game. Um, Cousin Jared, how would you tell people to play this game if they had to? I don't know how you could watch the first two games from this series and not like the over. Uh, and then not only that, but Jackson Holiday coming up for the Orioles, you think that's only going to help their offense that's already pretty good. Uh, I mean, we talked about, uh, you know, the, the way that the park plays in Cincinnati, uh, red Fenway, of course, always good for runs. So yeah, just knowing what we know now, I, I'd be hard pressed to say that the under or the over, whether it's first five, you know, personally, that's why I would wait until the morning here. I, I think I think I'm going to like the over first five full game, which one's going to have a better, um, you know, edge for me there, but yeah, not, not sure how you can't like the over. Yeah, the concern, of course, is these two pitchers are really good. But we had two good pitchers on Monday, and that game uh, pushed the total, got to eight. And those pitchers, of course, is fantastic. Yeah, And so that still got to the total and pushed it, of course. So we've got a push, and we've had an over. Uh, and like you said, it's, it's, it's really about the park here and that – runs can just come in a hurry and you saw it on Wednesday night. Um, doesn't matter how good the pitchers are. That park is weird. Routine outs turn into doubles, depending on where they're hit, you know, turn into home runs, depending on where they're hit. And again, there is no foul territory. So you're getting zero help yeah. whatsoever uh, in that ballpark. So that's why the park factor is so high there. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of like you, it's over pass. Uh, if it's nine and a half, goodness gracious, that would be terrible. I don't see yeah. it being nine and a half because right now the over nine is plus odds so if it gets to nine and a half that means people were hammering the over and uh we, you know we missed the boat i guess <laughs> but i'm like you let's see what happens in the first five might have an official pick uh in the morning we will find out but all those updates as always delivered to dub club where you get updates when starting pitchers change updates on the weather all sorts of summaries all sorts of benefits check it out if you haven't yet that link is in the show description you also get the play of the day which has historically been very strong very up and down so far to start this season, but we got the winner here on Wednesday. Maybe that can keep us rolling into Thursday. Cousin Jared, parting words before we sign off. College basketball season's over. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, you know, major props to all the work that you and Jake do for, for college basketball season. Um, but now we can all turn the page. 135 days until college football season starts. So, so I, can, I know that you're so excited to hear yeah. me say that. I, I mean, it, and to be fair, football was incredible. Uh, for us last year. So folks, if you're only with us for baseball, stick around for football because uh, we had a banner year in both college football and NFL uh, with tons and tons of profits. So it was, it was a great football season for us. And hopefully uh, it's always more fun in the off season coming off a season like that to look forward to yeah. hopefully doing it again. So 
Yeah. We'll be back uh, doing football soon enough, but for now it's baseball. Hockey model also over there still. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dub club that just continues to be a very slow and steady long-term profitability, but very variable. One night can be great or terrible, just complete ups and downs craziness. Yeah. Talk about roller coaster. Uh, been a roller hockey. coaster. Hockey is that. Hockey is that. We kind of knew it coming in. Uh, but if that was good insight, if you are looking to play hockey, and because you're, you're over there telling people on Discord, highlighting some of your favorite picks in the night, and you, you're, ten, you're doing pretty well with that. Mm-hmm. So if people want to bet some hockey, the dub club is the place to be. I, for some I, well, okay. So if if it gets cursed now, it's your fault. Uh, yes. I, I wasn't going to say that, that I had done pretty well, but I, I've done okay. As of recent, and uh, yeah, I didn't want to didn't want to change it up, but there you go. You, you I would say more than okay. I think you're okay because I brought it up. If you had brought it up, maybe that would have been the curse. But okay. I think since I brought it up, I think we're fine. You know, you, yeah, you okay. weren't you know being prideful there. I was I was bragging on you okay. and your hockey expertise. Uh, as always, we love your insights. Uh, the way you, you know the model, track the model, can see things, always provides us good uh, benefit. So again, if you're with us on Dub Club Discord chat, tag me, tag cousin Jared, okay. tag Jake as well, and ask us questions. We love to help out. Best of luck here on a shortened slate for Thursday. We'll be back for a full slate Friday as always. Though remember, you can technically eat betting money, but we ask that you please do not bet your eating money.